In this video, we're going to be going over one of my favorite air raid passing concepts in Madden 23. And if you want to get my entire Trips Tied In Offensive Ebook, we'll be discussing that formation today. If you want to get my entire Trips Tied In Offensive Ebook, make sure that you join uh, my Patreon. I'm going to put a link to that in the description down below. By joining the Patreon, you're going to get access to all of my Madden 23 Offensive and Defensive Ebooks. And Trips Tied In is pro probably my personal favorite this year, uh, but we do have 16 different offensive and defensive guides available uh, and by becoming a patreon member you get access to all of that so for just 10 bucks you'll get access to everything the link to sign up is in the description but the concept that we're going to be talking about today um, is one of my favorites it's a great man beater especially the way the game plays this year um, and all you need to run this is an outside apprentice now um, you don't have to you can we'll show you two different ways to run this one of the ways, uh, the first way will be with Outside Apprentice. The second way will be if you don't have any route running abilities, we'll show you what to do as well. So the play is PA slot corner. And we have two different setups to share with you. The first one is a really good three by one mesh concept that will really do a great job at beating man and zone. So what we're going to do is we're going to see route our outside receiver, Mike Evans, and then we're going to drag our inside trips receiver and our tight end. So you see, this is what the play art looks like. And what you'll notice with this play is this C route on this side is really, really effective, specifically um, against the man-to-man -man meta. Now, if you have short out elite on that player, he is going to light up and cook man every single time. You want to high ball and pass lead that outside. Now, it's important to discuss this whenever we're talking about a play in Madden. How are they going to, as a defense, be able to defend this? There's really two options they have. The first one is they can try to shade outside. And I will say that this is sometimes effective, but I will also say that it's actually fairly limited in terms of its effectiveness. Again, especially if you have short out elite. Uh, my experience is that if you shade outside, it does not always defend this in man-to-man -man coverage, as you can see right here. Um, and again, if I have short out a lead on that player, it's even more consistent. So the other option that they have um, is to play either cover three or cover four, or I'll show you one other adjustment momentarily that they can actually do out of man coverage. But what you'll see here is that that is even sometimes not the best strategy. Um, so if I go to cover three, really what they need to do, honestly, is they need to press out of a cover three. Um, so like a pressed third, really my experience um, will do the best. If you free form outside and away, you see there, that's pretty much bagged. Now, another adjustment that they can make is they can go ahead and just outside third this corner. Um, and this is actually fairly popular. A lot of people like to do this um, against trips tied in. So what you'll notice here is the simple outside third by this corner is going to leave this guy in a one-on-one -on -one scenario and make it hard. Now you can obviously try to aggressive catch uh, to get that separation, but I find that this is one of the key adjustments that a lot of people will make against trips to try to defend this. Um, so again, here I'll show you, this is the high ball, try to ag your way down the field, but not exactly perfect. But the problem is it doesn't solve the rest of the problem that this play creates. The rest of the play, if you will, is going to really do a good job of attacking man-to-man. -man. So these two drag routes over the middle of the field um, are going to be really effective, but the main route we want to look for is this post if that corner route or C route is, ta is taken away. So we're going to go from our C route, and then we're going to look to our, um, our little post over the middle of the field against man-to-man. -man. Now these drags are also normally pretty effective against man, especially in Ultimate Team. I would really recommend putting short in Elite um, on these interior receivers. It's going to help you beat man-to-man -man more consistently, and you see that they're going to run into each other this year. This is actually one of the best concepts, in my opinion, in this game for attacking man-to-man. -man. Mesh is really good this year because they actually do run into one another. Uh, against man-to-man -man coverage and they give you a natural pick and a natural rub to be able to get separation as you can see so to stop this play i'm going to give you some adjustments that they're going to have to do they're going to have to basically do something like this right here um, and then this guy is going to have to be able to user essentially the um you know the middle of the field and so that's where our second our secondary setup 
uh, is going to come in. If you don't have Outside Apprentice, there's another way to get to kind of basically the same concept. You will see that if they don't use her that triangle receiver, he's going to be wide open as well. So how do we attack this if they if they um, don't have, or if you don't have Outside Apprentice, how do we kind of create the same basic thing? Uh, we're actually going to use a 3 by one uh, concept. So what I'm going to do is we're going to flat our middle trips receiver, we're going to drag our tight end, and we're going to motion this post across, or this, this inside trips receiver across, he's going to become a post route. So now you're going to see a little bit of a different nuance to how we're going to play this. So again, just to illustrate, we're going to go ahead and make those same adjustments that we had made to stop the C route, and then remember this guy is going to be in conflict over the middle of the field. This is where their user is going to be more than likely, okay? So if you watch how this play is going to develop, you're going to see that this outside receiver is now going to be really effective at beating man-to-man. -man. So they're going to have to come down and user that player. And when they have to come down and user that player uh, over that over that sideline there, now we're going to get into a position where, again, you know, they're obviously already having to drop a lot of coverage to stop this. One other thing I do want to suggest that you can do um, is you could take the running back and put him on a wheel. This is just a great little uh, variation of this concept. Uh, as you can see right there, um, sometimes you can actually get this running back isolated one-on-one -on -one and have a potential high ball to the outside. Uh, we'll try to show that a little bit better uh, in the next clip. But, but you know, again, uh, for my money, you know, this is a really, really good concept to kind of combine with the first edition of this. They have to drop a hard flat to the right to stop the tight end drag, and they have to have an outside third to stop the C route. Those are kind of non-negotiable adjustments that a lot of people are going to make in trips tight end, or when they're facing trips tight end. So when you give them something like this right here, um, if you watch this wheel, he's going to get a lot of leverage. Once he turns the corner, we can highball over the shoulder just like that. And you see that that can cook man. Now, that's not the only thing that we have um, against man-to-man. -man. Uh, another thing that we have with this is now they have to respect the fact that the running back is on a wheel route, right? And they also have to respect the backside drag that we just showed you. So what that does is they're going to have to come down on this drag, and a lot of times it's going to leave this post one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Now, Chris Godwin, for whatever reason, doesn't get any separation. I will show you something else you can do to kind of help him get a little better separation. Be this is where short and elite really becomes very helpful because if you have short and elite, um, you know, this guy's going to light up when you snap them, when you snap him right past the tight end, like right here. And what you'll see here is now he's able to get that inside positioning and able to make a catch against that player. So as you can see, um, there's a lot of versatility in this play. If you wanted to keep this post route, what you could do is just drag the inside, do something like this. This right here is still basically mesh, except now we're going to use a tight end corner. So you can create this concept in a lot of different ways, but this is, in my opinion, one of the best concepts in the game for beating man-to-man. -man. So you're going to force them to go to some type of cover three hard flat style um, of coverage. That's basically what they have to do to stop this. Um, you know, playing cover three hard flats, and then they're going to have to use the post. The problem is then we can go to some of our zone beaters uh, in this offense as well, which if you play zone against strips tight end, good luck. It's probably the best formation in the game against zone coverage. Now, if you want to learn the rest of the trips tight end offense and how to really obliterate zone coverage, make sure that you join our Patreon. The link is in the description. For just $10, you'll be able to get access to my trips tight end offensive ebook, as well as all of the other ebooks that are available over at the Patreon page and any new ebooks or updates that we release going forward. So thanks for watching the video. And if you want to sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description of the video and click the link down below.